What is up, everybody? Josh here again, and today we have an Icarus Week 16 content update. They've made some changes to heat and cold resistances and some other changes as well. Let's get into it, shall we? Week 16, Scorched and Frozen. Icarus Update Week 16, Scorched and Frozen. This week brings a brand new mission and dangerous new predator, temperature system changes, UI improvements, and bug fixes. Another great week we're bringing you with our 16th content update with a new mission that takes you into the scorching desert to face a new threat. Now that the foundation of the game is closer to where we wanted it to be at launch, we can now focus on bringing new content and design adjustments. One of the areas we are most excited to develop is aggressive and later alien creatures that bring new challenges to players. With new challenges, we'll be providing a good basis to develop more purpose around tier four technologies and beyond. Dean Hall game runner beware of scorpions your newest foe on icarus is the scorpion a territorial creature who protects their lair viciously with a poisonous barbed tail and sharp pincers that can challenge even the most prepared players lord i know that already scorpions drop more unique consumables to craft with along with new food consumables with their own buffs using the expanded meat system introduced last week the concealment recovery mission will introduce you to these creative creatures so be careful on your step this week we have added some slightly enlarged and morphed arachnids it's a step towards some more interesting bespoke animal behavior and actions the mission this week is a nod to how they might have accidentally ended up on the the surface sean elliott game designer concealment recovery collect and destroy the results of a failed experiment uh the new mission concealment recovery will introduce scorpions to our prospects requiring you to recover a crashed bio container that has been inhabited by these arachnids this new risk comes with a fairly balanced reward in return so it's up to you to decide whether the risk matches the potential spoils the temperature system uh, for the Scorched to Frozen update, we set out to make a bunch of improvements to the temperature system, which is now more dynamic and responsive to choices the player makes. The armor you wear and the items you consume will now have a direct impact on your internal body temperature, rather than just simply affecting your resistance to external temperatures. You may notice new things like getting out of water bodies will keep your character wet for a while, and general QOL improvements to temperature-related consumables, including a new recipe to craft ice water on your character by simply combining ice and your trusty thermos. To keep you on your toes, we adjusted the temperature curves of the biomes and also brought the heat afflictions up to parity with the cold afflictions by introducing heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Now more than ever, the choices you make in these more extreme areas of Icarus can mean the difference between thriving or perishing. User interface updates. We've taken on board a bunch of feature upvote submissions and other suggestions to better explain how Icarus works for new players, but they'll be useful for seasoned prospectors too. We've made it clear whether the solo talent tree is active or not. It is deactivated whether you play in a group but you could still spend your points and interact with it and add a label so that you can know who owns each dropship. We've better explained respawning using beds at respawn points, recovering gear and death penalties, plus added a handy link to the most recent patch notes on the title screen. These may be small improvements and there are more to come, but they can really help new players. So we'd like to thank you for your feedback here. And coming soon, changes to drop timers. Drop timers are an important mechanism for providing pressure to enhance survival experience, but it's clear that we need to make some changes to how these work. We've been investigating how we can make these changes to better support the game. Dean Hall, Game Runner. We have been working on changes to how drop timers work to better balance the game for all players. We need to have a real world time when we can delete the data from our servers as it would progressively make the system unmanageable if we kept that data forever. However, we could store your data for so quite some time, and it doesn't need to be directly linked to the drop timer length. The change we are investigating is to separate these two needs out, having an overall real-time limit that is quite generous, say 90 days, after which drop progress may be deleted, and a separate in-game timer that still meets our design objectives and can varying per drop to add pressure. In addition, we are also investigating how to bring in insurance as a gameplay element, as there have been exciting suggestions from the community how to implement this in a fun, interesting way. We don't have a fixed time frame for both of these additions yet, as they will require careful testing, but we will have more to either say or show for next week's update. And then we have, of course, the detailed change log. We're going to go through that and kind of show you guys a little bit of this information 
information, kind of show you the most important things. Of course, if you want the full patch note, I'll link it in the description down below. So they've added a new mission, Concealment Can Recovery. It's located about midways into the chain at the very bottom. They've now added heat exhaustion, which effect says this heat is overwhelming you. Counter it with cooling band-aids. Gives you quite a bit of reductions to melee damage, water consumption, health regeneration, weight capacity, and experience gained. They've also added hyperthermia, which your internal temperature is too high. Basically 100% water consumption and stamina consumed. They've added the cooling bandage to help counter heat stroke and heat exhaustion. And it can be crafted for 40 fiber, 4 oxide, and 10 charcoal. They've added scorpions to the game. They're actually quite easy to, to avoid, but also quite deadly if they sting you. giving you the poison debuff. They made several temperature changes and balances, modified biome temperature, modified how temperature resistance work and reworked the player cold and heat resistance. They also added the concept of armor insulation, which I could tell you now is actually worse than it used to be. Nanio armor is not as good as it used to be as far as resistances go and can no longer completely make you impenetrable to heat and cold. These now need to be countered with band-aids, such as the cooling band-aid and the heat band-aid, which are quite easy to craft with oxide, charcoal, and fiber. They can also be countered with other talents and whatnot as well. They've also made it where you can't really matador bears now, as they will hit you. Looks like we're back to this method. They also modified the warm and cozy buff. Going through water and getting wet now can now last for up to 30 seconds, giving you negative 20% cold resistance. You can now make ice water in your inventory. All characters have this by default. Requires 50 ice in a thermos container. And this will give you a plus 10% heat resistance for 600 seconds. Once consumed, all water in that thermos is now gone and you have to make another ice water. But it looks like that this does not expire. So you can keep this with you at all times to get the plus 10% heat resistance. They added the ability to put your flashlight on your light bar. They added patch notes to the launch screen. All you have to do is click that and it'll bring you to a separate web browser with the patch notes. You can now see a tooltip as to who's drop ships who's. As you can see, this is my drop ship. And as you can see, it says this is not your drop ship if it's not your drop ship. Bears are dangerous now. They really are. If you ain't rolling around with a rifle, you can roll around with a rifle and kill them pretty easy, but you cannot matador a bear now. If you try to, if you even get close to the bear, he still swipes you and hits you. He'll turn left and he'll swipe you. They improved the smoke effects from mission containers so they can be more visible from further away, giving a tactical advantage to scouting up high and to find incomplete objectives. As you see in the distance there, you can see the smoke a little bit better. They updated the texture to the bedroll and actually added a tooltip saying what the bed does. They added a tooltip to tell you whether or not the solo tree is active or not. As you can see, if you click over on solo, it'll say active. This talent tree is only functions when playing solo. You can now make crispy bacon with raw bacon and animal fat in the pot belly stove, which gives more maximum health, maximum stamina, and also gives critical damage, as well as the 15% experience. Best to make your bacon crispy. Composite paste now has a new icon that's it for this update guys don't forget if you like what you see to like comment subscribe and all that good stuff and hey we got our youtube account fully back now finally got a hold of youtube and google support and we got it all back now so so i'm able to answer and see all your comments now 
Comment down below what do you think about this update and all the changes they've made. And also, I've got a talent video coming for you in the next day or two. So, look forward to that. We'll see you next time. Peace.